On your side, investigators working to get answers in our community. An African-American cemetery dating back centuries in the middle of a Berkeley neighborhood. But you wouldn't know it's there. In fact, the pastor of the church that it belongs to just found out about it. Amazing. WREG investigator Jessica Gertler finds out what's now on top of the graves that's causing concern. They got mattresses. They got a lot of things that's here. Charles Harvey. You guys kind of watch your step. Is discovering more about this land. It's devastating to be honest with you. Tucked behind a daycare and laundromat in Berclair. This was a cemetery. If you look at it, it doesn't look like a cemetery, but it was a cemetery. A cemetery where members of his church once buried their loved ones. Purchased in the 1800s, the first burial in the early 1900s. Some say that there was 60 people that were buried here. Others say there were more, a hundred or more. Harvey is a pastor at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Raleigh. The old church used to be somewhere in this area. Harvey says his church moved out of Berkeley in 1960. Records we uncovered show the land was divided up among the trustees and sold to various parties, except the land where the cemetery sits. Harvey says he didn't know the cemetery even existed until he became a pastor about a year and a half ago. He's now doing research and discovered sometime in the 1970s, all the headstones were removed. Someone came in and dozed off the cemetery. We poured through old commercial appeal articles in the Memphis Library archives and found this article written in 1979. It mentioned some of the tombstones from an abandoned Berkeley Cemetery were found dumped off Macon Road. They didn't know who removed the tombstones, but the registrar's office was trying to find out more. So was this man. In 2017, Jeff Droke spoke to WREG investigators about the cemetery he remembered playing in as a kid. It's been his mission to find out what happened to it, and today he's working with the church, still searching for answers. There's two parts to this equation. Especially now that the land turned into a homeless encampment. The first person we encountered in here was laying on a very nice waterproof mattress. Since last summer, Droke and other neighbors have contacted the city, Memphis police and council members about the encampment, citing blight and safety concerns. The city's crime tracking map shows theft, weapon violations and drugs have been reported in the area within the last few weeks. It's unclear if the people camping here were involved. Police did say in January they found a van parked behind the laundromat and along the cemetery and the people inside had meth, marijuana and fentanyl. They saw what was going on and they're like, yeah, we the city's like, yeah, we really need to clean this up. But the cleanup isn't easy. We've learned the city of Memphis has contacted the hospitality hub here, a group working to end homelessness. They've sent out their street outreach team to the site to help. So that's the team who goes out in the community to meet people where they are to try to introduce themselves, hear what that person may be experiencing, what kind of support they need, and then they offer that support. Jessica Harari is with the Hospitality Hub. Then we do face a lot of mental health disabilities, addiction. She says it takes time to build trust. If we do it right, the folks who are there will eventually accept services, and then we work with them to get them into emergency shelter and then longer term permanently housed. It's very sad. Harvey says what's happened here is complicated, and he also wants to make sure the next steps are done right. Didn't get this way overnight. It's gonna take us some time to get it to where it needs to be. Now we have to find out who's where. He's working to discover more about this land. Make sure it's not forgotten. Jessica Gartler, WREG News Channel 3. A big challenge there, and we will keep you posted on what else we find out. The church posted no trespassing signs around the property, and it plans to eventually put up a fence and some kind of memorial. As for the hospitality hub, it says its outreach team is getting more calls. If you would like to help their efforts, we put more information on our website about them. Just click on this story.